everyone. This is Judith Munoz. I am chair of the Mission Bay Park Committee. I'm calling it to order. Um, I want to make sure everyone knows our board members that are here. I mean, committee members. We have David Potter, Giovanni Angolia, Jeff Johnson, uh, Marshall Anderson, Stephanie Smith. And I know Ron Anderson. I saw that too. These somehow I'm, I'm losing some people. Is there, are there any other committee members who are here? I, I missed. I think um, then the next thing I'd like is a motion to approve the minutes of the February 1st, 2022. Um, Judith, before we start, I'd like to- Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. Mike has to tell everybody how we have to behave. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mission Bay Park Committee. My name is Mike Rodriguez. I'm the district manager for Mission Bay Park. Mission Bay Park Committee will, conduct, will be conducted pursuant the provisions of California Executive Order 2920, which suspends certain requirements of the Ralph M. Brown Act. In the interest of public health and safety, board members will participate in meetings by teleconference. As such, in accordance with the executive order, no members of this public will, will attend this meeting. In lieu of in-person attendance, members of the public may join meeting online, such as you've done today. For those wishing to make live public comment, please follow the instructions and join the meeting of the web, webinar and right now you'll use, you'll lower your hand and then when public comment comes or it's time to speak, you'll raise your hand and we'll admit you to the meeting to speak. So with that, Judith, I'd like to pass it back on to you. Okay, you broke up a little bit, Mike. So now I would like approval for the minutes of the February 1st, 2022 meeting. I'll move to approve, Giovanni. Okay, I will so move Ron Anderson to second. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, any comments? Uh, real quick, I voted no on the De Anza parking lot allocation. The minutes say I abstained. I'm just not comfortable allocating funds to De Anza until we know what we're doing with the site. Okay, Mike, can you get that? Yes, Marshall, I'll mark that as a no vote for you and I'll correct that for the next meeting. Thank you, sir. Yeah, anything, anything else? All right, all in favor of approval of the minutes, say aye. Ron Anderson, I. Aye. Aye. Okay. What, what I'll do, what I'll do for the motions is I'll call your name. Let's go this route. So Ron, Ron Anderson. Ron Anderson, Ron Anderson, aye. Marshall Anderson, aye. Giovanni, aye. Jeff Johnson, aye. Judith Munoz, aye. David Potter. David, go ahead and unmute if you'd like to vote on this. We have his hand raised. You have your hand raised. Okay. There we David. go. I got you, David. A Stop question on the one regarding uh -huh. uh, the section code 26.30. Has a letter been written yet uh, regarding our recommendation that six be deleted and, and so the CD the, one and two be now shown? That'll be under the chair report tonight. She'll make uh, Judith will make comment on that. Oh, this okay. is this is for this is for approval of last month's meeting minutes. Okay. And Steph, Stephanie Smith, I abstain as absent. Okay. And do we have Darlene on here yet? Uh, is she in attendees, Johnny? Darlene, yes. Okay, let's Darlene admit her. Walker. Yeah, let's admit her. Oh, Darlene, you're there. Would you like to approve the minutes given the amendment from uh, Marshall Anderson about the Deanza vote, Darlene? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the motion carries six zero with one abstention. Okay. Or seven, seven zero with one abstention. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's no continuances. So the next thing is for non-agenda public comment. And I wanna remind people, these are for non-agenda items. So we're not talking about the Danza nat natural plan, but just anything that's not on the agenda. Mike? Okay, so any of the attendees would like to raise their hand? It looks right. like, what is it? Wayne. It's not Wayne, it's uh, Laura. 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 Laura, I'm going to go ahead and admit her. No. I will go. go ahead, Laura. This is for Laura. Okay. Go ahead uh, and unmute. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes. Hi, I'm Laura Colban. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak. So I just wanted to address what I consider to be a very difficult and dangerous parking situation on El Carmel Point. 
I row at San Diego Rowing Club and I start rowing at 5 a.m. So I have to be at the boathouse between 4.30 and 4.45 and it's pitch black. So I don't know if any of you have ever tried to park on El Carmel at that time of day, but it is, it's totally dark and it's all the parking spots are basically filled with cards that have shades over their windows. So people are generally sleeping in them and a few camping trailers. You'd also see needles on the ground. You see some garbage. There's vomit on the ground. It's pretty gross. Um, every now and then there's, you know, that time of the morning, there's sometimes an addict or two walking around. Sometimes there aren't any, you know, they're all in their cars still. It's basically a nomadic type of a homeless encampment. So it's not it's not like these places where people go and they set up their tents and they stay there for months on end. People are going there and they're staying for a few days or sometimes a week or two and they're living in their cars. Um, and it's pretty uncomfortable to have to deal with that in the morning. Um, in the summers and on the weekends and on holidays, there's no way I'll find a parking spot. So I have to arrive even earlier. I have to drive over to Santa Clara, which is 0.9 miles away. And then I have to walk by that entire mess. Um, it, it's not just walking by it. It's also the effect that it has on me as a rower because I've seen homeless people wandering into our locker room. Um, you know, we used to, when I started rowing 10 years ago, we would keep the back door open to get some air and we can't do that in the locker room because somebody will walk right into the, to the women's locker room. I mean, homeless people want to take a shower and they seem to know that that's, you know, one of the few places to do that. I don't understand why nearly every other parking area around Mission Bay is closed between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., but our area is not closed. It's the only parking area that's used routinely by people before 5 a.m. because there's so many people that row. And when you have that many people looking to use a recreational area for the purpose that it was originally designed at, at a time that, you know, for a legitimate purpose, it should be possible to, to park there safely. Um, I don't think that you have the same kind of safety concerns at any of the other parking lots that are closed between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. So I'm really hoping that you'll take action and close that entire peninsula between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. to make it safe for those of us who want to arrive at, you know, after 4 a.m. for a, a safe, legitimate purpose, for the kind of purpose that that parking was put there for. Um, okay. Well, thank okay, you, we, have, Laura. we have time. Thank you, Laura. Laura, Thanks, I'll, Laura. I'll work with you offline on that. Now, one of our Ranger staff is on here and we heard it. So we'll talk. I'll email you separately on that one. I Thanks. appreciate that. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. So we have another public comment uh, limited to three minutes. Dan O'Neill. Good evening. Thank you for your time. Uh, my comment is also about the parking issues and lack of enforcement on Santa Clara Point and El Carmel Point. Um, I am concerned about shoreline access to Mission Bay for the people of San Diego. It's being limited by the lack of parking enforcement along El Carmel and Santa Clara Place. We have a safety issue to the adults and high school students that participate in programs at Mission Bay Yacht Club and uh, at the colleges at the Cogs Hall Rowing Center. Um, there have been thefts from Mission Bay Yacht Club. I know that Kendall reports things a lot. Uh, I don't, I use the Get It Done app. And I think there's a fundamentally a lack of fairness, social norms uh, when the parking regulations appear not to be enforced despite numerous notifications to SDPD and the, the park rangers. We currently have campers that have been in place, in the same place for, I think, four weeks. And they have not been asked to leave, apparently. They're still there. Um, I also want to suggest that it's March. We have the opportunity to get ahead of this issue before spring break arrives and the summer arrives when the problem will get worse. Social media is the fastest thing in the world. If it gets out on social media, that this is not a good place to park anymore, that you will get ticketed overnight, that the parking rules will be enforced fairly and equitably, I think we can help solve this problem. 
I look forward to how I can help um, with this issue. Uh, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Mike, are there any other public comments? I don't see any hands up, so no, there's not. Okay, so uh, the chair's report. Uh, yes, David, it, it, in responding to your question, um, I did draft the letter. Um, I it was written exactly with what the committee uh, voted on. And uh, Jeff Johnson was going to send it out. Did it get sent out, Jeff? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I, so yes, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't have a copy of it in front of me, but uh, Jeff, do you have a copy of it in, <clears throat> in front of you? Uh, yes, I do. Could you maybe, could you read it so that David could hear what it says? It's, it's pretty short. Certainly. Uh, dear Mayor Todd Gloria, Council President Shawnee Hilda Rivera, District 1 Council Member Joe LaCava, District 2 Council Member Dr. Jennifer Campbell, and Dr. District 6 Council Member Chris Kate. Letter is as follows. After the 2020 Census and upon redistricting of City Council Districts, Mission Bay Park will reside in Districts 1 and 2, effective January 2023. At the February 1, 2022 meeting of the Mission Bay Park Committee, a resolution was passed to request that the City of San Diego update parts of the Municipal Code to reflect this change. Article 6, Boards and Commissions, Division 0026.30C, Mission Bay Park Committee 3A currently states that three members shall be nominated by each of the council members of District 2 and 6. The committee recommends that Section 3A of the code be updated to reflect the redistricting and that three members be nominated by council members of districts one and two. When I discussed this issue with Matthew Gordon, Director of Appointments and Boards and Commissions, he informed me that you were appro the appropriate audience to effectuate a code update. The committee does not see this change impacting the current composition of the committee which is serving as a highly functioning advisory group. Thank you for your time and consideration of our request. Sincerely, Judith T. Munoz, Chair, Mission Bay Park Committee, CC Andy Field, Director, Parks and Rec. And um, this was updated. Uh, Chida Warren Darby, Director of Appointments and Committees and Commissions. Okay, any comments on that? Thank you. Okay. Uh, I just also wanted to say that I was asked uh, to speak at the February 5th Love Our Wetlands Day. Uh, there were a number of speakers there from UCSD, from uh, elected officials, the mayor, council people, all of that. I just told the committee, just told the people there uh, what, what our committee does. There are over 600 people. So there are a lot of people who, as we know, who care about our bay. And I imagine some of the people are with us tonight. So that's my report. Uh, the next thing is staff reports. Uh, Carrie Munson, do you have a report from Council District 2? I don't see Carrie's name unless she's a call in. Carrie, are you present? Okay, is Rick Ribeiro here? From Fire Rescue? I don't see. I don't Hello, see this Rick. is uh, Rick Ribeiro. I'm here. Hi. Okay, Rick, do you have a report for us? Uh, yes, the one uh, big item for us to report for lifeguards is we have the arrival of our uh, new grant funded uh, fire boat uh, that arrived uh, last Monday, and we're currently in the process of uh, training on it and outfitting it. So you'll be seeing a brand new uh, lifeguard vessel, all aluminum, 43 feet in length, and that'll be used for uh, power patrol duties and fire suppression on Mission Bay. Uh, and that's the uh, one big item I have to report. Are there any uh, any questions as far as uh, any items for lifeguards? Okay, and thank you, Rick. Um, Mike, is there anybody here from San Diego Police Department? I don't see anybody, I don't recognize any names. Anybody from San Diego Police? No. Okay. no. Okay. okay, then Mike, you're next. Okay, everybody, Mike Rodriguez, Mission Bay Park. Um, we're currently filling positions, vacant positions for the 11 ground maintenance work, grounds maintenance workers for Mission Bay Park. Interviews have been conducted and we're getting approvals to get them started in the next uh, couple of weeks. So that's good news. 
as well as the two park ranger vacancies. Um, we're going to be filling those shortly. We've made offers and we're waiting those to start. So that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Department today announced a new chief ranger position. His name is Michael Ruiz. Some of you may know him. He will be serving as our department's chief ranger, overseeing the ranger program for the entire department, including Mission Bay Park. And he's expected to start next week. And uh, hopefully I'll, at a future meeting, I'll have him come and introduce himself and talk about what his duties and roles are. As far as special events go for Mission Bay Park, uh, the big one coming up is the Crew Classic. And that's gonna be the week of March 20, the weekend of March 25th to the 27th. And I did find out today that we have a new director of appointments for boards and commissions. And her name is Cheetah Warren Darby. And she started this week and she took over Matthew Gordon's position for the boards and commissions director of appointments. Uh, um, projects, we've got Santa Clara still working on the Comfort Station Playground. If you've been by there, um, that's moving along nicely, as well as the whole Tecolote Shores and the South De Anza project, which has about 220 working days left. And they've got an exemption to work through the summer. So we'll get the playgrounds, the fitness stations, the restrooms, and all the walkways done, as well as the adult fitness there. So that's what I have today. I didn't realize that... Um that Matthew had, had left. I guess that's why I haven't heard from him. Okay, so uh, no action items, nothing for adoption. So we're going in for special events. And the first one is walk for water. Mike, do you know who's speaking for that? Yes, let me get my notes. Go ahead and raise your hand if you're the speaker for walk with water. I have a few different names on here. Aaron, Aaron, go ahead and bring Aaron on. Okay, Aaron, there you go, you're on. Yeah, great. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Mike and Judith and everybody else. Uh, yeah, so I just have a few minutes to, um, I presume to tell you a little bit more about Walk for Water and then see if you have any questions for me. But Walk for Water is a um, nonprofit that um, is associated with our Life Spring Center that um, we've had uh, on good terms with the IRS, et cetera, for uh, 25 years. Um, more recently, we have um, started doing fundraisers to put water wells in villages around the world where there is no clean water. So presently, there's about 781 million people around the world that uh, just drink dirty water because they don't have access to uh, anything else. And um, so we're making a difference uh, with that. We're just starting. We've done six wells so far this year, though, um, and th those were done over several few years. But uh, this year, it looks like we're going to be able to do about eight to ten wells. And um, last September, we we had an event at Lake Murray, and we had about 150 people um, there. It was a successful event. We raised enough money for three wells. Um, over that couple of week period. The, the event at Lake Murray was just one day, but there were some other associated events. Um, so we're proposing that on May 7th um, at De Anza Cove, we would have a similar event where we would walk about a total of about three and a half miles, uh, the length of distance that a person in a village has to go to get dirty water. So we're going to walk that same distance so that they don't have to. Um, that pretty much uh, tells the story of what's behind it and why we're doing it. And we're expecting um, a bigger event this time. We had about 150, like I said. We're looking to, to double or triple that. So we needed a bigger venue. Um, do, you, do you have any questions for me? Uh, Anything else you would like me to tell you about the event? So committee members, are there any questions? Hearing none, I would. Okay, so. Okay, okay so yeah, this is um, the Walk for Water event. Everybody was given that information. May 7th, 
De Anza Cove Park, uh, 450 participants, minimal impacts to the park, um, staff supports this event. Right, so I would, um, is, is there a motion to, to support this? I will make a motion, Ron Anderson, to support this. Is there a second? Jeff Giovanni. Giovanni a second. Giovanni, okay, all in favor? Oh, um, I'm sorry, Mike is gonna take the roll. I will call Ron Anderson, that's a yes. Mark yes. Anderson. Yes. Mark Giovanni. Yes. Jeff Johnson. Yes. Judith. Yes. David. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. And Darlene. Yes. Motion carries eight zero. Thank you. Okay. Thank so you. Aaron. Aaron will be in contact. Work for the permit center, and you're good to go. And good luck with with your walk. That's a that's a, a great um, program that you're supporting. Yeah, thank you so much. I just have one question. As it was written here, um, per, it says permit will only be valid when all leasees are notified by organizer. I assume I'm the organizer, correct? Yes. Hey, so I'll know. provide you. I provide you with a list, Aaron, or the permit center does, and then you'll notify them of your event. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate all, all right. you do for us. Okay. Let, Bye now. Judith, Judith, let me chime in. Um, we missed a public comment, a hand raised right at the end of public comment. So I'd like to invite Ryan Wild to speak under public comment. Ryan, you've got two minutes. Hey, thank you so much. Um, I've been a member, uh, I've been a, uh, a resident of Mission Beach for 35 years. Uh, my family uh, first settled in Mission Beach in 1938. And in the last five years, I've never seen a more uh, blatant disregard for the laws and regulations or the selective enforcement of them um, in my entire lifetime. And um, I think what's really frustrating about that is that it's, it's causing a lot of crimes in our neighborhood that are a direct result of turning a blind eye to people living on our points and in our parking lots, uh, parking lots that have a uh, hours of curfew that they should be closed before between two and four and they're sleeping in there anyways and nobody's removing them. Uh, I had uh, my personal car, my, my father was walking along the point and caught somebody breaking into my car with, with car theft tools uh, recently. And then uh, two days ago, I was cleaning out uh, the glass out of uh, uh, my garage after uh, helping my brother replace the window in his car that was smashed out. I, I realized that uh, more recently we have uh, Santa Clara Point. The reason that these meetings might be held in uh, on Zoom instead of in person at Santa Clara like they used to is all the windows at Santa Clara were smashed out. Um, and, and a lot of that is really frustrating because it's, and, and last night I also had somebody who uh, was going through my trash for 30 minutes on, on a, a, our cameras uh, going through our trash, looking for bank statements and things like that to steal identities. And, and all of these people that are perpetrating these crimes, oh, and my bike was stolen. So all these people that are perpetrating these crimes are being left and turned a blind eye to on the point. And I'm a direct witness of this. If you go down in the morning to Santa Clara, I've witnessed the groundkeepers ask the, the people that are sleeping on the point to move, mow the lawn, and they move their stuff right back and there's no enforcement telling those people to go elsewhere. They've lived there for a very long time and, and they've become very complacent in the fact there will be no enforcement. And it's extremely frustrating to see that- Thank, thank you, I, Ryan. We gotta, we, we gotta put limits on, but I got your point. Thank you. Okay, Any, all right. So now we're moving on to the Beach Basketball World Championship. Yes, I'd like to admit uh, Pat, Maldi, is that how you say it, Pat? Go ahead and unmute and present your proposal. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Can you also let in John Manson? Yes. He should be raising his hand. Yes, he's on. Okay. Johnny, you want to go? I'm ready to roll. Okay. Uh, thanks, guys, for having us. Sorry I had to follow up with that last call. That's a, that's a rough one. Um, I am one of the founders of the Beach Bocce World Championship. It's, uh, we're in our 41st year. Uh, up until now, it's always been held at Dog Beach in Del Mar. Uh, Del Mar is 
hoping to start having events there that are smaller than our event. Our event's a pretty large event, and we're proposing to have that September 17th at Mariner's Point. Uh, Mariner's Point checks off all the boxes for us. Uh, great access to parking. The beach is perfect. And you might ask, why, why play bocce ball on the beach? Well, bocce is typically, you know, uh, Italian lawn, lawn bowling, if you will, uh, played on grass and clay. And so uh, that's more of a roll. We do a toss. And we have 400 some odd two-man teams uh, that take place. And it's just, uh, it, it truly is a world championship. Uh, like I say, our first event was July of 1981. So um, it has access to all the hotels and eateries and things that uh, our demographic are looking for. Pat, would you like to take it from there? Sure. I'm, I'm Pat Maldi. Thank you for having us. I'm the events director for the Boys and Girls Club. John came to us with the idea of this event back in 2006 and, and asked if we would like to be the benefactors of it. And we said, yes, we would. And since that time that the, the event typically raises about $100,000 annually for the kids, um, we really pride ourselves on, on leaving the beach cleaner than when we found it. And um, to that extent, we do our best to eliminate all plastic use of single, single use plastic. We partner with Urban Court to help uh, clean up the beach during throughout the tournament and afterwards. And actually by the end of the day, there will be world champions crowned in each of four divisions, but the emphasis is always on fun, camaraderie, and ultimately having a positive impact on a lot of young lives. I know you guys have the outline of the event, so I wasn't sure if there was anything specific that we needed to address, but that's the overview. Thank you, Pat and John. Yeah, there is a staff recommendation to approve this event, uh, a new event with uh, about eight to 900 participants and another couple hundred uh, spectators. So, so back there, to you, Judy. Yes, yeah, so are there any co committee member have any questions or comments? I, I just want to say it's, I guess as an Italian American, it's exciting to see bocce ball, having, having a bocce ball tournament mission, mission Bay, and I will make a motion to um, approve this. All right, Giovanni. Okay, is there a second? <laughs> I had a, a question, Judy, and I've had a chance to attend this in the past. Very fun, a lot of funny costumes out there. And, and historically, it's always fallen on the same weekend as OTL. So I've always feel like I was conflicted. So nice to see the new dates. I am curious, I know there's no serving of alcohol except to VIPs, but historically folks were allowed to bring their own booze. Will that still be the case here? Um, I can answer that. So as far, I reviewed the park application and there's not free range alcohol for this event. It's not a fenced in beer garden. The only area that'll be fenced in would be the VIP um, alcohol service. So the answer to that is no. Got it. Uh, I'm happy to second the motion. There is one comment. This is um, Bay Fair weekend. But we're able to accommodate these numbers, even though it's Bay Fair weekend, um, we are able to accommodate these numbers because it's at Mariner's Point. Got it. Happy to second. Okay, all in favor. Uh, Mike, you want to take a roll? Uh, Ron, Ron Anderson. Approve. Marshall. Affirmative. Giovanni. Approve. Jeff. Approve. Judith. Yes. David. Approve. Stephanie. Approve. And Darlene. Approve. Motion carries 8-0, no abstentions. Okay, so again. So we'll be we'll be in contact, uh, Pat and John, and I'll have you work with our senior park ranger for uh, after you get your permitting done. We'll work with Park Ranger for a pre-event walkthrough. Sound good? Thank you so much. Right. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank yeah. you all. Thanks, guys. Okay. Have a good, good evening. Luck you. Good luck with your event. Thank Appreciate you. It. Yes. So now we're going to move to the highlight of our evening. Uh, we're going to hear a briefing from the city on the De Anza Natural Plan. And Scott Sandoval is going to make this presentation. 
Okay, Scott, go ahead and introduce yourself and share your screen. All anybody right. else? Anybody else we need to admit, Scott, or do you, is your team online here? I got I Jennifer. We're all online. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Let's see, can you see the screen? Yes. Awesome. Um, as Mike said, I'm Scott Sandell, Parks Planner for the Planning Department. Thank you for putting us on your agenda. Uh, joining me today to discuss the project and describe the environmental review process are Jordan Moore, Senior Planner in the Environmental Policy Section. And in case we need some question and answer support, Samira Rao, Acting Program Manager in the Public Spaces Section of the Department. We're here for an information presentation. We're currently for, to study a change, an amendment to the Mission Bay Parks Master Plan. Why are we doing this? <laughs> well, this figure shows what is currently in the Parks Master Plan and what we're building off of. I say building off of it because the Master Plan called for more study at the Enzo Cove. It called this a special study area um, because the Master Plan called for that. And this is the process we're in now plan, the area where camp land is located, is to be converted to be an extension of the preserve, um, the, the wetlands preserve to the, to the west. We're studying all these areas for revitalization and how to balance uses and create wetlands as well. So why make an amendment to the Mission Bay Parks Master Plan and prepare the EIR? Well, the amendment will allow future projects to eventually be scoped out. Um, for example, a general development plan public process will take place to design and all the features of Deanza. Um, and that will include its own robust series of meetings. For today though, we'll focus on the plan map and its EIR process. So we're here to get you up to Deanza. Um, at the end of the presentation, we'll be able to answer any questions from the committee. Um, and then if members of the public wish to provide a comment, there's no need to raise your hand or the Q&A function. You can just please type your first and last name into the chat and interested speakers can speak in the order received by just putting interested to speak or something like that in the chat box. And then at the end of the presentation, we can hear feedback after um, you know, speaking and letting everybody from the committee speak. Um, so with that, I'd like to say that we're early on in the EIR process. Um, we've been listening to stakeholders for years on this project, and there continues to be plenty of time for public to weigh in. So, thank you for the dialogue. Um, the Dienza area is located on the northeast corner of Mission Bay Park. So let's get us all oriented here. The slide shows some of the existing uses on a regional level throughout Mission Bay Park, such as regional parkland, um, camping, multi-use fields, golf, etc. The project area is closer here in the an aerial view. So here I placed some land marks, Frost Marsh Reserve on the west, Mission Bay High School there next to that, the golf course and everything on the site, Fiesta Islands to the south, and I 5 is to the east. Um, shown here, of course, um, is the bird's eye view. It shows basically the what we call the boot, if you will. Um, and so if we refer to the boot, you can see how the tip of the boot is the, the toe and the heel is the corner here closest to us. Um, you can see here the cove, you see the golf course, of course. Um, and you can see just to the left there, Rose Creek at its outfall. And you can see at the little tip at the bottom left, a little bit of camp land at the bay. Um, so here, let me go through a few uses. The existing land uses that may be familiar to some attendees who previously attended some NOP scoping meetings and previous meetings to that that were held in June of 2018. Um, the proposed project area includes the Kendall Frost Reserve, um, which is also called the Northern Wildlife Reserve, and camp land on the bay west of the creek. To the creek and north of Mission Bay Drive, the Mission Bay Tennis Center, the athletic fields, including um, Little League and soccer, the San Diego Boat and Ski Club, um, and the golf course. Then south of Mission Bay Drive is the closed De Anza Cove Mobile Home Park, um, De Anza Cove Park itself, Mission Bay RV Resort, um, and with the cove, they're swimming in the beach. The area was formerly known as the De Anza Special Study Area, as I mentioned before. 
Um, here we go. In December 2017, the Mission Bay Park Committee recommended the revised alternative two that we see here as the basis of the amendment to the Mission Bay Parks Master Plan and for the subsequent program EIR that we're involved in now. And this is after working with the planning department on many different options. Uh, note this planning diagram is really not as it's not illustrative with design features, but instead it delineates which land uses go where, and the multi-use path um, is shown dashed. It may be a little difficult to read, but you can kind of see that there's a dashed line that shows that multi-use path. Um, this concept plan was developed and released in 2018 to reflect that Mission Bay Parks Committee recommendation. Um, again, it's not a design, but planning map of land uses. Some of you may have participated at some time or another in giving us feedback on the desired recreational uses contemplated to be in the De Anza study area in getting us to where we are now in 2022 um, with our De Anza natural plan, um, which we released in January. The De Anza natural plan would expand existing wetlands in De Anza Cove to include many additional habitats, including lower, middle, and upper marshes mud flats, oyster beds, and open water. It would also add native coastal sage scrub, dunes, and other native plants to upland areas of the cove, creating a natural setting that visitors will be able to walk through and enjoy. If you can see the dash line, the, the, the dash black line again, um, that's again what we call the multi-use path. Um, it's the bicycle and pedestrian path that parallels the coastline that you see throughout Mission Bay. It connects on the south at the existing boat ramp, boat ramp near Mission Bay Drive and Claremont Drive, and it meanders north and western through the project area and connects both north the existing Rose Creek Bikeway under Grand and on the west toward Crown Point over the existing Mike Koch pedestrian bridge. The amendment to the Mission Bay Park Master Plan will include a land use plan. This plan, as it's, divine, def, eh, as it's refined as a project alternative, will greatly increase biodiversity in De Anza Cove, while also providing an important nature-based solution to help the city prepare for sea level rise. In line with our recent climate resilient ST plan, um, we'd like to acknowledge the Kumeyaay and indigenous peoples and their relationship here to Northwest Mission Bay, and we look forward to collaboration. And here's, um, a, a display from, as you mentioned before, Judith, we, we attended the Love Your Wetlands Day and we presented this plan with um, Jordan and I um, at the Wetlands Day and we saw a lot of people and we heard a lot of input as we heard ideas from a remarkable um, variety of stakeholder interest groups and individuals. Just that were presented to the committee back in 2017, um, show different kind of functions low cost of visitor accommodation stuff on the left, um, interpretation of nature and the multi-use path. Then captured here are a few more activities that we'll be studying again. These were images shown to the committee in 2017. There'll be room for programmed and unprogrammed recreation. Both facilities and a potential land and water lease could be right on the cove. Water quality and the amount of flushing from bay currents will be studied, and the beaches may not be designated for supervised public swimming if studies indicate that public swimming is not recommended here. Um, and now I'd like to get the chance here to hand it over to Jordan to discuss the Vienza EIR. Thank you so much, Scott. Good evening, everyone. The California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA, it's a statute that requires state and local agencies to inform the public and decision makers about the potential significant environmental effects of a project. CEQA also encourages public involvement and input. Next slide, please. The program level environmental impact report or EIR that is prepared for this project will identify potential impacts of the project as well as any cumulative impacts that may result from the proposed project combined with other planned and reasonably foreseeable projects in the surrounding area. When any potential significant impacts are identified, the program EIR will provide mitigation measures, which are ways to avoid or reduce the potential environmental impacts. The EIR will also evaluate a reasonable range of alternatives to the project to a comparative level of analysis as required by the CEQA statute. 
purpose of the program EIR is also to foster public involvement. And the information in the program EIR will be used by the city's decision makers as part of the deliberative process in whether to approve or deny a project. However, it is important to note that the program EIR itself does not recommend approval or denial of a project. Next slide. This slide contains a tentative schedule showing the overview of the EIR process and the opportunities for public participation. The first step in preparing an EIR is to define the project, in this case, the Ant Natural. Next, the city prepares and distributes a notice of preparation. The NOP is the process by which responsible agencies and interested parties are notified that an EIR will be prepared. The NOP for this project was distributed in January, and that initial public review period is now complete. Next, the city will start the preparation of the draft EIR. Later this year, public review of the draft EIR will occur for a period of 45 days, which is the second formal opportunity for public comment. After public review of the draft EIR, the city will prepare the final ER, EIR, which will include a response to any comments received during the formal draft EIR commenting period. Finally, the ANSA Natural will be presented at public hearings before the Mission Bay Park Committee again, Park and Recreation Board, Planning Commission, and eventually to City Council and then Coastal Commission. These hearings will provide additional formal opportunities for public comment. And with that, I'm going to hand the presentation back over to Scott. Great, thanks, Jordan. Um, yeah, at this point, we'd like to entertain questions from the Mission Bay Park Committee when you're ready, um, then followed by the comments from interested speakers and the order in which we see them in the chat. Um, so for, one, you know, once we get to the public comment, um, to respect everybody's time, we'll continue to like limit comments to two minutes max per speaker, if that's okay with the committee or if the committee would like to manage public and then we can defer to the chair on that. But um, yeah. Yes, so I, that, I think we'd like to limit it to one minute each. Okay, great. So, so is there any, any questions from our committee? Yeah, let me step in. So thank you. Uh, this is Mike Rodriguez. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, Jordan, for the 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 presentation on the notice of preparation for De Anza. I'd like to go to public comment first, and then we'll come to committee after. So we'll need to raise your hand from the public and we'll go ahead and admit you for a one minute comment. Tom Doyle, Tom Doyle go ahead and we'll admit you and you're first up. Hi there, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Tom, I'm a local San Diegan, um, and I'm a little concerned with this major change to the De Anza area. Um, I've enjoyed playing golf at the, cor at the course for many years, almost my entire life playing golf. Um, I've also enjoyed going to Camp Land and being able to have an affordable camping option. Uh, if anything we've learned in this uh, COVID shutdown, people really got into new hobbies and started trying new things and the amount of people playing golf and the amount of people renting or owning uh, camping vehicles or overlanding vehicles to go out and have a good time for an affordable price has definitely gone up. Um, and by making this change, you're not only eliminating those options for these people in the city of San Diego, but you're also eliminating uh, a revenue source. And honestly, if under correct management, that golf course could do an amazing job and be an actual revenue stream for the city um, and could be done. Uh, a lot of better things could be done at that course uh, to get it on the map. So I think it's a bad idea to make all these changes. Um, I think having what you have and better using it uh, could do better for the city than making the uh, nature preserve change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And I'll go to Mac, M-A-C, Mac. Yes, thanks for your time. I know it's important. Uh, you know, as someone who often enjoys the Mission Bay Golf Course as well as the surrounding areas that were mentioned, I got to say, I'm disappointed that anyone is considering what amounts to changing that land. The, the golf course alone has a long history uh, surrounding families. And, uh, you know, it's an affordable and valuable community establishment and, and a social learning place the way it is. And I don't have to point out the cost of living in San Diego is already so high. Why are we considering removing affordable recreational uh, opportunities? Um, in closing, you know, I read the city council has approved new hourly fees for city park use. And that just makes me wonder if the city simply wants to remove existing recreational facilities in order to create more parkland with the intent to charge citizens to use it. 
It's a very disappointing proposal, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Seeing no other public comment, we'd like to turn it over to the chair and you can uh, have committee members speak on this item. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, committee members, anyone have any questions or comments? Yeah, this is Jeff Johnson. I have a, a couple comments. Um, the uh, kind of falls in line with the public comments we just received. Um, I'm I understand change is necessary and, and, you know, modernizing things in certain, certain areas can be good, but, um, you know, we're charged here to protect Mission Bay as a resource for everyone. And a previous commenter pointed out very clearly that, you know, it, it, things are getting more expensive for the everyday person living in San Diego. And that is the, that is the purpose of the Bay is to be, a city resource for its residents and visitors to be able to enjoy themselves. And, um, you know, the, the golf course is one of the few affordable options for an everyday person that can't afford paying $300 green fees at Aviara or something like that to play golf. And personally, um, I had to shelter uh, for COVID twice in the past month and a half and both of those occasions. I stayed at Campland and it is a, not only is it a fantastic place, but it is very heavily used. Um, I would not be in favor of anything that would be removing uh, affordable recreation options for everyday folks like the golf course and for people to come and stay and recreate at the Bay affordably like they can at Camp Land because not every a family of four can't afford to buy or, or, uh, or pay for two rooms at the Mission Bay Resort or at the Bahia or whatever else. Um, I think those resources need to be protected um, for average folks. And um, I would like to see considerations of those things worked into this EIR um, early on, so those resources don't get trampled. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, any, any other any other committee members oh. like to speak on this item? Yeah, this is Giovanni Angolia. Go ahead. I'll make mine short. Uh, I I want to just echo the same thing with with uh, Jeff. I kind of want to see the more um, you know, let's let's you know, we don't want to get rid of stuff like um, camping or, you know, and we want to look at, at affordable recreation as well. So I, I don't know how better to say it than he did. So. You got it. Okay. Um, and, and, and anyone else? I got yeah, Marshall. Yeah. Marshall. Oh, let's do Marshall. Marshall Anderson has his hand up. Okay. I can't see hands up. So, okay. <laughs> thanks. Thanks all. Uh, first, just thanks to staff for your work on this and for being here. My frustration is certainly not directed at you. So bear with me. We spent a few years debating all this under the previous administration, and now we have a seemingly brand new concept. For me, active rec is the most important component of our bay. I think this concept drastically shrinks our ability to provide that use. We should be striving to add active recreation, not shrinking what is currently provided to a footprint even smaller than where the current golf course is. Um, I want to echo some of the comments around Mission Bay. I, I think with a little TLC, its location could really make Mission Bay Golf Course a destination and potential moneymaker for the city. I'm hopeful the city will keep it as an 18 hole executive course. It's one of the few golf courses I can think of where you can show up in a tank top and flip flops and not have to spend hundreds of bucks on green fees. Um, I also want to note that the Mission Bay Boat and Ski Club has been deleted. They spoke at our last meeting. I know most boating clubs around the region have a high barrier to entry. This is one of those affordable neighborhood amenities. So hoping you can sit down with them and work something out. And then if we could, if we have time for questions, I was curious, after the EIR is approved, the city would then come back with a GDP, a general development plan. Is that correct? Um, yeah, this is Scott. So yeah, the first stage is to, to get the amendment to the, to whatever the decision makers, the city and eventually Coastal Commission and city um, decide to get, to have the 
this was a park master plan um, revision completed. And then after that, yeah, you could have one GDP or you could have um, you know, a GDP for focused areas that would happen. Yeah, and those general development plans or GDPs, you know, would have their own set up public meetings um, and go park board and stuff like that. And, and um, I get, part of my ignorance, but why not do the GDP first? So you figure out what's actually going to go in and then conduct the environmental review after. Because I feel like once the EIR is done, everything's cemented. Um, no, that you generally start with a, like a land use plan because this is a land use plan. You want to start with a land use plan to, to just just generally define and then of course study in the IR um, what those specific uses might be, and then from there you design, you know, exactly how they're configured on the site. Got it. That's generally how it works. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. Any other co committee members have comments or questions? Judith, this is Stephanie. I, I yes. have a comment. Um, so I echo the other members' comments about active recreation, and I'd like to add kind of concerns with getting rid of youth sports fields. I know it's a big um, use in that area for a lot of nonprofit rec leagues, and it's um, concerning to see that small area and that it's going to be a competition between those and, and golf. And it would be nice to see both and also um, to continue the camp land use, or it doesn't have to be camp land, but some type of camping use along the bay. It's such a gem in the region. Um, my other concern is public trails. So if the reserve goes forward, which I'm also in support of, I think it's important for water quality in the bay, which is a big concern that I have. So I like to see that the, the um, restoration is going forward, but I don't like to see that it, there's minimal trails through it. And I think that there are ways to put trails through a lagoon or a restoration like this, if it's fenced and so that the, the people are protected from the wildlife. And I would like to see that studied in this alternative. And my final comment is, I'm quite concerned about the proposed swimming area with the, the water quality um, coming from Rose Creek. From what I'm seeing, it looks like Rose Creek would be draining right into that swimming area. And I know that in the staff's presentation, which was fantastic and I do appreciate all staff is doing, but I'm concerned with the idea being that, well, if the water quality is not good, we just won't have a public beach because I think um, public beaches are an important aspect of this plan as well that needs to be considered. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Any other co committee members have comments? Um, I, I just want to say, I, yeah. I'm going to go ahead, who? Go ahead, if someone said something. This is Ron Anderson and I'll, yeah, Ron, make, this, this, I'll make this short and brief. I echo uh, all our other uh, former members of this board and what their feelings are. I want to go on record as stating that uh, I agree with them and what their concerns are and um, would never be in favor of removing said items uh, in this plan. That's it. Okay, well, I guess my, my comment would be that I, I certainly appreciate the, uh, the need for affordable re recreation and for recreational d d d diversity. But I don't think we can overlook the fact that sea level rise is is real, and that the the need that we have for wetlands for water quality. So I just want to say that I have no other comments. I will thank uh, Scott and the staff for, for for the presentation. Anything else, Judith? I do have one more. It's Mike Rodriguez. Sure, so I Mike. received I received thirty emails from the. Mission Bay Boat and Ski Club, and I will I will read one of them that basically covers what all of them are saying. Hello, I want to go on record. H Hello, I am writing to express my concern with a proposed De Anza Natural Plan, which eliminates the Mission Bay Boat and Ski Club from its current location. I'm a member of the Water Ski Club, which has thousands of recreational skiing events in Mission Bay since 1958 and stored multiple boats at the boat club over, for over 30 years. Elimination of the boat club from its current location with no other boat storage facilities, including the plan, would adversely affect the water 
ski club's ability to provide on water recreation for its members, local citizens and visitors to San Diego as we have for 64 years. So I just want to go on record, I received 30 emails, um, similar statement to that. That's okay, all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, well, thank you. That's a very interesting presentation. Well done. And thank you for the staff for doing that. Uh, do we have any committee member reports or other comments? Okay, then uh, I'll have a motion for adjournment. Well, you don't need a motion, but we'll oh, adjourn I don't. It. Okay, then we're adjourned. 6.55. And we are moving into the mission day Improvement Fund Committee meeting. Not make this one one. Meeting. Yes. So okay, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep this on one recording. Go ahead and call to order at six fifty-five. Okay. Thank you. I need a motion for the approval of minutes of the February first meeting. Motion to approve. Thank gotcha, you. Jeff. I'll second it, Giovanni. Gotcha. Thank you. Again, just want to note my no vote on D DAN's allocation. Okay. Uh, that was, for, yeah, I got you on the first meeting for that. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we'll go ahead and let's see. It was, what was it? It was Jeff and Giovanni, right? Yes. Let's go ahead and call, and call, uh, yes. call, call Ron, it. Ron, Ron Anderson. Present. Uh, Marshall. Here. Giovanni. Yes. Yes. Uh, Jeff. Yes. Yes. Judith. Yes. Well, wait a second. Are you doing, are we taking the attendance or are we taking a vote on the motion of the minutes? We're taking a vote on the motion to approve the minutes for the Mission Bay Park Improvement All Fund. Right. Yes. All right. yes. David Potter. Yes. Approved. Stephanie and Darlene. Abstain. Stephanie abstains. Approved. Okay. Motion carries seven zero one with Stephanie abstaining. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike, do we have any non-agenda public comments? I see no hands raised in the attendees, so nope, move on. Okay, it looks like the only thing we have is an informational item on Playa Pacific improvements. Okay. Uh, Francis? Yep, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Go All ahead. Right. All right, good evening. All right. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Francis Marquez, and I'm an associate civil engineer with the city of San Diego um, Engineering Capital Projects. And we're here to present the um, conceptual plans for the improvements at Playa Pacifica. Tonight, um, we'll be presenting the proposed improvements to the boat ramp, parking lot, and the comfort station. And we, we will also be presenting two playground concepts for comments. Um, we have today, tonight um, our design consultant, Amy Hoffman from KTUNA, that will lead the presentation. Their uh, sub-consultants are also present should you have any questions. Um, and also, we're looking forward to hearing your comments um, from the committee and the community. So, uh, Mike, can you please give uh, Amy Hoffman um, permission? Go ahead and share your screen, Amy. All right, working on it. How's that look? Good. Looks Thank good. you, everybody. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, as as Renta said, Thank you, I'm Amy Hoffman. I'm a landscape architect with KTUA. Uh, we are leading this team. Um, we have with us tonight, uh, Naveen Waney from Platt White Law and we have Jarrett Lynn from Naslin Engineering to answer your, any questions if any come up. Our team also includes um, plumbing, structural, electrical, do technical surveying and some cost estimating as well. So the project is just south of Danza. Um, it actually is just south of the area Scott was talking about, starting at the boat ramp and going southward. The next slide yes, shows you um, an aerial overview of the area that we are addressing. So from the north, the, uh, the boat ramp down toward what was Mission Bay um, Visitor Center and is now the Beach Club, we're mostly, well, the largest area we're addressing is the parking lot. And we're also um, improving the boat ramp, the comfort station, the playground, the basketball courts, and the ADA walkways and pathways in this area. 
Uh, and I'll get into more detail on all of those aspects. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of which portion of the park we're talking about. So as I mentioned, our goals, Francis also uh, mentioned them in general, are the comfort station, the parking lot on the walkways, the playground and the basketball. This happens to be three uh, projects in one, all grouped together to address the same area. So really quick, you probably know this, but uh, this is our existing comfort station. There is a, pump, a sewer pump station on this corner of this particular building. The parking lot is in pretty poor condition. Um, it is mostly used for boats and RVs. The boat ramp, uh, we are talking about extending uh, above the waterline. The basketball courts also are deteriorating some and the tot lot is meh. <laughs> it, it is what it is. Uh, so we have for you um, preliminary design ideas for improvements to all of these areas. Uh, this is a overview plan of what we are uh, addressing with this project. So as I mentioned, so if, we go, if we go from north to south, the boat ramp would be extended approximately 80 feet. And we're talking about extending it to um, let the crosswalk here uh, be improved and be on, uh, on the concrete of the boat ramp. Um, we would also have the appropriate curb cut uh, ramps, curb ramps uh, for that crosswalk. Uh, there will be the appropriate bio, bio retention basins for stormwater quality in this project to address uh, all of the surfacing that would be um, improved in this part, in this area, in this project. The whole parking lot will be um, resurfaced and the worst areas will have full depth replacement uh, so that it is a nice smooth overall parking lot. Uh, we would be able to, at that point, reconfigure the parking lot, um, getting a few more parking spaces that we've got a tally on the side over here, um, as well as improved access from the existing um, ADA spaces to the comfort station with an improved crossing and a walkway through the lawn area. The, the comfort station restroom building will be replaced. The bike path that runs along the west side of this, this portion of the park, well, all the way around the bay, but this within our portion, we would be um, replacing for, for better ADA uh, accessible um, slopes, cross slopes and, and surfacing improvements. We are, Looking at the uh, reconfiguring of, of the parking lot so that as you come in the main entrance, it, it is much easier to get to the boat ramp. Um, and that also allows some of the parking reconfiguration, uh, more parking spaces that we have um, tallied on the side there. That would mean a little bit more lawn um, in this area. And then moving southward, um, the the bioretention basins would, would uh, mean that we need to reconfigure this corner a little bit, but uh, we're also looking at replacing the tot lot and I will have share with you two concepts uh, tonight for the playground area. We are um, laying out a pathway, an, an accessible path from the basketball and playground area up to the corner of Claremont Drive and North Mission Bay Drive and improving that intersection, the, the crossings at that intersection uh, with the appropriate curb cut curb ramps and um, through the island right here. Uh, the basketball courts would be replaced as well. And I think that brings us all the way to the south end of this, um, this map. So I can get more into detail uh, as we move forward. So as I mentioned, the comfort station would be replaced. Um, the thing, what we are keeping is the pump. The sewer pump would not be removed. We would build around it um, and replace uh, the old, old building with the new um, restroom facility. And this would have eight unisex restroom stalls, two of which would be ADA accessible, four sinks and a baby changing station, four showers, on the, the west side here, 
and one of which would be ADA accessible with an ADA bench, also shower benches being available. So all of these facilities would be accessible from the exterior with no hidden areas or creepy corners, um, the, the sort of new modern safe uh, facilities that we have been, uh, the city has been putting in. Um, all of the, the building would be designed to be um, easily maintainable and also look really cool. So um, we are talking about a lightweight concrete roof and smooth concrete block walls. But we're also hoping to bring a little bit more fun and interest to this uh, particular restroom so that it uh, becomes related to the bay. So we have the um, kind of the, the sand colors, the wood colors, the, the water ripple ceramic tiles, the blue and green, blue green paint on the, um, the metal doors and the trims. And also, like I mentioned, the open to for security purposes, all of the, the shower, this is the shower area on the, the north elevation, you can see it sticking out and you're looking straight at it at the west elevation. And then all of the restrooms have the, the appropriate um, enclosed but safe and open uh, configuration. So um, the other uh, items that we're gonna be showing you here, as, as I mentioned, we have two ideas for the playground. Um, so the first one is kind of based on sea life and also on the Mission Bay Beach Club which was the Mission Bay Visitor Center. And that was constructed in 1969 by architect, architect Dick LaRoe. And he actually was inspired by the shape of a seahorse um, and the flowing sea grasses and the other cool things happening in the bay and the water so that it becomes a more sort of natural form. And if you do look at it from the aerial view, you can see that seahorse spiral. Um, that also inspires, is, relates to the shell spirals and eel, eel grass that waves in the, the water. And that inspires our playground layout, the first concept of the playground layout. Um, there's a lot that we have suggested in this area, um, more seating, fun seating areas, structures for uh, little kids, big kids, lots of swings, um, rock climbing, spirals, lots of spiraling, twirly spinner items, um, and lots of accessible and um, inclusive uh, play equipment. Um, so I do have, uh, you can also see that uh, this we would be uh, working to relate the playground to the re replaced basketball courts. So the, um, as I mentioned, structures for each age group, two to five, five to 12. Um, there are also available some um, sea creatures, dolphins, whales, and that type of thing that we can look in for kids to climb on. Uh, lots of spiraling things and seaweed and driftwood and that type of inspiration that we would work in here. Um, wonderful play equipment is available. Lots of swings are always popular. Um, it's kind of the upgrade on the tire swing. We all remember when we were little, it's a it's much safer and, and it's also very inclusive. Um, and spit the spinners are super fun and very popular. And then the seesaws, there's a couple different types. This one is, um, is kind of standalone and there is one available that we have suggested um, in the structure that is, is one that the, um, anybody in wheelchairs Did, did I lose connection? You're back, you're back up, Amy. I'm back now. Okay, let me get back to my screen. I'm not sure where it cut off. We're, we're back now? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I was talking about inclusivity. There are, are um, in-ground, uh, in-ground merry-go-rounds and um, wheelchair accessible seesaws that are available 
Um, and any of these can have kind of theme items added to them as well. Uh, there can also be plenty of smaller items added into any of the playground structures uh, that kind of enhance the theme and our discovery items because kids like to go and find things. Oh, look, mom, I found a shell. Um, oh, look, that looks like seaweed. Uh, all sorts of things that can be added to it. So this is an overview of this particular concept from the kind of from the Northwest um, with the swings on the foreground and the big kids structure. And then you can see the, the uh, smaller one in the background. The light poles uh, represent what is ex existing light poles uh, along the bike path. This is another view from the Southeast from the basketball court area. Um, looking back at uh, the equipment that's suggested in this one. So the second concept that we have to present to you tonight uh, is inspired uh, by the boats and the sailing uh, and the fact that uh, the bay is of course right there with all the boats that happen to be docked in the area and that uh, sailing is of course a big part of our area, our history uh, and what we do and as part of our recreation. Um, in San Diego. So it's exploring and playing in boats. Um, this particular layout uh, uses the, the fact that there's a small hill just to the east side of the play playground. Um, the, what, the sidewalk that surrounds this particular layout would slope upward about three feet, not even quite three feet. We could make it about three feet and then you can wheel straight across a little bridge onto the boat and onto the play structures. So again, we're looking at inclusivity for our wheelchair users and for as many people as possible, uh, letting all the kids have lots of fun to have be had. Again, we'd also have some, some more seating areas, picnic tables uh, near both the basketball court and the playground area. So the stru structures in this concept are, uh, again, boat inspired, so a little bit more shaped to be directly that. Little kids and big kids. And again, this is where I mentioned we have the wall. Uh, well, not a wall, I'm sorry. We, ha we have a slope up with a little bridge. And then as we develop this concept, if this is the one we are going with, we will look at whether we slope the surfacing up or provide a little, um, rope barrier here, or what, what we need to do to um, make this the best fun that can be had with this particular boat layout. Again, this is the one where wheelchairs can go all the way through the structure. Um, both concepts have, the, have a rock climbing feature. Um, and this is another version of the, um, the seesaw where you can just wheel your wheelchair right onto it and, and be part of the play. Um, swings included in this one as well because swings are really really popular, really amazing. Um, and lots of spinners. Um, these are super popular ones as well, the climbing as well as spinning. And then a, another version of the sort of in-ground inclusive uh, merry-go-round as well. So this is a view of this particular layout from the Southwest. Um, looking back at the sort of hill area. And then from the Northwest as well. Either of these concepts, we would work in lots of interactive panels so that wherever you are on the playground, you've got noisemakers and things to explore and tactile um, marbles or mirrors or things that uh, kids like to, to get their hands on and explore and see what's going on. And also we would work in, like I said, seating areas, um, trash receptacles as, as necessary, potentially bike racks and all of that to match the furnishings in the park. And at this point, uh, we'd like to welcome any comments. Very good, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Francis. Yeah. Does anyone have any comments? Were you were you asking for our opinion on 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 the two different plans? 
So, or... so Judith, Judith, we do have some comments, but it, it okay. looks like there's two different options for playground styles. It's not an okay. action item today, but we can share our comments and then they could take that and run with it. So let's start with uh, David Potter. You know, I like the boat concept. That would be my preference. I like the boats too, David. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be more unified. So Any that's th this is a multi, you know, multiple product. You got the comfort station, the parking lots, the playground, the basketball courts, <clears throat> and the walkway. So there's a lot. Go ahead, Marshall, and then I'll have a couple comments on this. I am so happy to see this. I'm pretty sure the current basketball surface is the same one I played on as a kid, and deteriorating is definitely an understatement. I definitely think this is going to complement the beach club's upgrades nicely. On behalf of the Hoopers, I would like us to explore the potential for cushions on the basketball poles or at least set them back a little bit from the baseline so they're not a hazard, you know, when folks are making layups or strong drives to the hoop. I am curious if, if lights would be implemented on the court or if there's even a demand there, if that increases the court's usage. It's something that we can take under advisement. Good. And then uh, definitely encourage softer court surfaces than concrete, just on the basketball court. Maybe look at the tiles if it's cost effective. Is that concrete super tough on the knees? Um, oh, just curious if we need that many parking spaces. I mean, we have the trolley now on the other side of Claremont Drive. It would be great to squeeze in more active rec, maybe even a pickleball court. I mean, we just had the whole conversation around De Anza a minute ago. It might be a little tough to take out parking uh, on the parking lot because I think the Coastal Commission is really against that. So, uh, but yeah. um, <laughs> we're looking into it. And, yeah. and then uh, this is a rhetorical question, so the answer is optional. But if we're taking such drastic steps with regards to climate resiliency at De Anza, why aren't we doing the same here or elsewhere along the bay? Just something for us to think about. Thanks all. Judith, I, this is Stephanie. I, I have a comment, if that's okay. Yes, Stephanie, go ahead. Okay, um, I, I think it looks great. I have a couple of thoughts. One is I noticed there's a shower associated with this comfort station. Is that something that we are doing with other comfort stations? Uh, let me comment on this is Mike. So they're not really technically called showers. They're called rinse stations. That's the official term. And yes, when we have comfort stations near bodies of water, we are putting rinse stations in at those comfort stations. That's pretty consistent. Okay, because my only concern is with this being close to the, the dump site for the septic, I feel like this is already pre a pretty hot spot for some of these transient vehicles. And I'm concerned if we're encouraging more people to be there because of the use of the comfort station and a shower and now the dump station and, uh, and all that. So it's just something to think about. Um, I, a couple other things, this isn't related to parks, but I just want to put it out there that with the trolley station across, like Marshall mentioned, we really need to improve the access from the trolley station to this park. And I know that it's a, it's a multi jurisdictional agency concern, but it's just something that needs to be continued to be explored. Um, and then is there a possibility to have more tables around the playground with that um, visitor center? It's, it's so popular, which is fantastic and I love it. It's just the tables there are getting full so I can see parents wanting to go grab a drink and sit and have their coffee while their kids play. And right now there's not a lot of table space there. So maybe in, including a few more and um, I don't know if you could consider putting in a zip line in that playground. There's a current zip line in the playground and it's kind of like nostalgic and cute. And so if that could be facilitated, I think that would be a neat suggestion. And then a final thought is, um, I love that you're doing a pathway to connect from the visitor center down to the playground and from the basketball courts, that's great. Um, an idea of right now that all these playgrounds right along the bike path and then kids are kind of toddling. I don't know if there's a possibility to do a walking path adjacent or like parallel to the bike path, just as we're moving forward with doing more pathways. And that's my only comments. Thank you, Stephanie. Any other comments? 
Go ahead. Just, yeah, I have a couple comments. One, as somebody who rides through that parking lot at 5.30 in the morning at least three days a week, I'm super excited that it's going to be resurfaced because uh, every time I make it through without crashing, I'm amazed. Um, <laughs> and secondly, um, I want to echo the concern over the trolley access that Stephanie and Marshall both um, alluded to. Um, recently, uh, for not having anything to do with this committee, I actually rode the trolley to the Claremont stop and then walked down to Super Bloom at the uh, at the beach club there at the Bay Club, and it's not an easy it's not an easy uh, thing to do. You have to you know cross Claremont Drive. You have to walk up a set of stairs. You have to walk across the on ramps and off ramps. Uh, one of which you actually have off ramp traffic coming at you unsignaled. Um, you know, it's, it's not a simple thing. If there was a way to find a pedestrian friendly way to get from these trolley stations down to the bay level, that is something that needs to be looked at. Yeah, uh, Jeff, absolutely. I drive by there all the time and how these trolley stops have been and they, how difficult it is to, ex to access them parking, I mean, walking is, is ridiculous. Yep. Okay. Mike, did you have some comments? Yeah, um, just want to confirm this is a prefabbed restroom. Is that correct, Amy? Or is this a new construction? This is a new construction. Okay, it's a new construction restroom. And I really like the way that the parking lot at the boat launch has been reconfigured for boat launch access. That's great, because in the past, if you've ever launched there, you had to drive all around the parking lot. So that's, that's a good concept. I appreciate that. And those basketball courts are near and dear to me as well, Marshall. Those are ones I played on as a kid. And the plan is I do want to be involved with the standards and the padded poles, and we'll get some heavy duty um, backboards and maybe a, an acrylic type. And I have heard from constituents that they are wanting lights at that court. So that's maybe something we can look at. I and mean, that could cause a little more work at a coastal development permit, but that's something that has come up in the past through the public. So that's my comments. Okay. Comment. Giovanni. Go ahead. I just, first of all, um, just want to definitely echo the um, a pedestrian crossing or something from the um, the trolley station over there. We, I, I wholeheartedly agree 100%. We need to uh, get better access to that, and it's unfortunate that we don't. I, um, I like the boat concept as well. Um, the one disappointment I have is, is I think with every comfort station, because I know there are comfort stations we have done this in the city, that there is no uh, um, solar on there for them to run off of. It's, a, it's another way to help the environment. Um, so this is my continued disappointment when we put in comfort stations throughout the Bay Area that we don't have make that many added to it. And, uh, and when it comes to basketball, as somebody who is horrible basketball, I'll defer to the experts on it and... Uh, <laughs> on this committee. <laughs> Sounds like those basketball carts are pretty old, Mike. <laughs> Basically, they're, one of them is in disrepair, and we're only down to one court right now, and we're getting a lot of concerns on that. So the faster this project moves forward, the better for us. We're not going to put a bunch of money into repairing that surface if this project's moving forward. So what is the timeline on this, Mike? I'll leave that up to Francis. Okay, I mean, sorry, uh, Francis, what's the timeline on this? Um, so right now, uh, construction is anticipated around winter of 2023. Starting it? Starting it, yes. When would it be finished? Oh, let's see that. Um, let's see, I'm looking at my schedule right now and around December, 2025. <laughs> Well, that's uh, we have some of our, um, um, our, our internal um, internal closing uh, items included in that uh, duration. So um, it'll likely finish uh, earlier than that, but um, you know, just the uh, whole construction duration includes uh, about a couple of months of uh, closeout items. You know, so we're looking at three years. No, no, no. Oh, about about over a year. So December, uh, I said November twenty twenty three. Oh, let me correct myself, hold on. 
It shouldn't be three years. I'm sorry. It's not, it's not going to be three years. I'm going to show you that. Uh, I'd like to chime in as well. This is Jennifer Scott. Um, we're currently funded for design only on this project. Um, so the construction timeline is really going to also be dependent on, on the availability of that construction funding. Um, as I know you guys are aware, the Mission Bay funds, um, you know, kind of took a, a hit in the last few years. And so we're hopeful that we can continue to prioritize this project and keep um, moving forward and get it funded. Um, and we'll provide Mike with an update on the schedule that he can provide to you guys at the next meeting as far as the construction duration and anticipated start date. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, thank you. And it looks like our there's no other topics for tonight. So our meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks all. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Shorter than we Hi, had thank anticipated. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hi. Gwen, me or you? <laughs>